and welcome to NTV Wild Talk with me, Smriti Vidyarthi. Today, we're coming to you from the Amboseli ecosystem here in Kajiado County. And this is why we're here. A sight that's becoming all too familiar. Two elephants speared dead in Kajiado County. But these elephants were not victims of poaching, but victims of human-wildlife conflict. Cases of clashes between man and mammal are on the rise, particularly in Kajiado County, and Morans are taking matters into their own hands. The most recent incident occurred on the 27th of March, in which a 13-year-old boy was killed by an elephant in Namalok, Kajiado South, while herding cattle. The elephant is believed to have come from the nearby Amboseli National Park. The Morans, determined to carry out a revenge attack on the elephant, failed to find it. Earlier in the month, a 14-year-old boy and a 3-year-old boy were killed by elephants. While residents are calling on the KWS for more protection and compensation, the incidents often leave them angry and bitter. Cases of human-wildlife conflict are robbing communities not only of lives but also of their source of livelihood. And as a result, the conflict is robbing the country of some of its most precious creatures. So clearly, residents of Kajiado County are facing some serious issues, and those issues certainly do need to be addressed. I'm now at the Altukai Lodge here at Amboseli at the foothills of Mount Kilimanjaro, and I'm joined by Julius Chepte. He is the Assistant Director of the Southern Conservation Area, and that covers the Amboseli National Park. Julius, thank you for joining us on NTV Wild Talk. Now, in the month of March, two children were killed by elephants as a result of human wildlife conflict. This isn't the first time that there have been loss of lives. What is the Kenya Wildlife Service doing to address this? What happened is actually something that is tragic and from Kenya Wildlife Service we are very sorry for the incidents that occurred. We have enhanced our problem animal control team in the areas where it is affected by human wildlife conflict and uh, we are monitoring and uh, being very responsive when we are called to do that. So we are actually on top of things and we believe that the same trend is not going to happen again. Julius, you say that you're on top of things, um, but with all due respect, there have been concerns and complaints from residents that sometimes say that the Kenya Wildlife Service doesn't do enough when they are called or that they do not respond to incidences immediately or swiftly enough. What's your comment on that? To be sincere, everybody is um, allowed to have his or own opinion uh, to what we do. But as we are concerned, we are actually responding very fast to all the issues. Even when you look at what happened on 12th, the senior warden for Amboseli, when she was given a call, mm -hmm. it took her only less than 30 minutes and she was on the scene. She mobilized all the resources, she mobilized all the government officers who were on the ground and they were able to address the issue. So it is normal for people to lay complaint when they are not satisfied with the service. But we are trying our level best to ensure that we meet the demand and provide the service as required to the public. Well, how are you doing this? Because we're talking about reactionary um, you know, it, cases, but how do we prevent human-wildlife conflict? Because this issue is brought about mostly because of human population growth and a conflict of um, land. Uh, the, the elephants believe that the, you know, they deserve a certain space, of course, yet the uh, human population is growing and perhaps encroaching on this land. We from KWS, we must be responsible for what happens. And the public also must be responsible on their action on how they move. Uh, when an accident occurs, it is not because one has not done what he or she is supposed. It, we can treat it as an accident. Because when you look at uh, the last uh, three years within Amboseli ecosystem, uh, this is where we are talking about a uh, number of people who have been killed so far. We can count that we've lost about eight people so far within the entire Kajiado County. Right. And uh, as a result of that, you'll find that many of these incidences does not occur in an area that uh, people are not supposed to be. You find that, for example, the boy who was killed, he was grazing. Right. And that is in the bush. And therefore, 
we don't have control specifically mm. on somebody who is in the bush. There was a lady who was killed who had gone to uh, look for firewood and it is in the bush and it is in that particular area where that accident occurred. So you find all these are in the twin. And uh, our prayer is that all of us, we need to be conscious and be observant. On that issue of, of being conscious, uh, Julius, how is the KWS managing to convince a population that is losing lives to live happily with elephants and wildlife? There are many benefits that we get from uh, wildlife and uh, this includes uh, developments that we do within the areas that wildlife are within the Amboseli ecosystem as an organization. We know very well that the community, without them, uh, this park cannot survive. Uh, when you look at the size of the park, uh, we are talking about um, 392, which is just a drop in an area where we are talking about 9,000 square kilometers. And therefore, a park is a small portion. So what the organization has done is that we are contributing towards the education of the children right. of the community around here. We are also contributing towards the water holes and the water points where the livestock can take water and at the same time uh, elephant can also take water. We are also involved on social responsibility mm -hmm. uh, within the entire area and we have also NGOs who have come in place. And when you look at the amount of money that circulates within the ecosystem, the benefits are enormous. And uh, it is my sincere hope that uh, many job opportunities have been created for them. Right. And that's how things are happening. But do the people on the ground, the communities, essentially really feel the benefits of wildlife? Because one can argue that as much as wildlife is contributing to our economy as a whole, the people on the ground aren't feeling it. Well, I want to say that when we provide what we do and other stakeholders in the conservation industry provide what they provide to the same community, the feeling is enormous. Mm. But the problem always occurs when an incident like that one has happened. Then people say, we are not benefiting but they don't appreciate the good side that we are doing. If they were not getting or appreciating what we are doing from the conservation sector, honestly, we would not be having wildlife in this particular area. When we spoke to a few of the community residents, um, the feeling was that if one of our community members is killed by an elephant, no matter what, we will retaliate, we will go out there and we will find that elephant and kill it. And that's what has happened. Therefore, do you really think that human beings and wildlife can coexist peacefully? Yes, uh, I think human beings and wildlife can coexist peacefully and that is our prayer. The reason why I'm saying that human beings and wildlife can coexist peacefully is that look at the years that the Maasai community have lived with wildlife. Mm. They have always coexisted. Now, if we devise uh, new ways, new methods of benefit sharing and all this, I don't think whether there will be a problem to that effect. And this is taking shape uh, because some of the non-governmental organization have uh, paid a lot of money uh, to create conservancies build tourism facilities within the community land and all this benefit goes to the community and as much as when they realize that this is what they are getting they will coexist certainly hope that prayer is answered it is very crucial julius thank you so much for your time yes so i've now come to a farm here in Cagliado county to find out more about some of the human wildlife issues let me explain where i am ahead of me lies the amboseli national park it is beyond that hill that you can see but behind me there's plenty of farmland and beyond that is mount kilimanjaro which is currently clouded but here's the issue Elephants from the Amboseli National Park migrate as they do towards Mount Kilimanjaro, but the farms stand right in their path, hence resulting in human wildlife conflict. I'm going to head on to one of the farms to find out more about it.
Right, so ahead of me, I can just actually see some farmers who seem to be sorting through a pile of uh, tomatoes. Let me see what they have to say. Jambo, habari, jambo mama. Unafaya nini hapa? Hapa najakua nyanya. Ile libagisho juusi na hii wanyama. Wanyama gani ndovu? Ndovu ndio libagisho hii tu nyanya najakua hapa. Kutoka juusi, kwanza juusi kwa mkia jumatano. Iliingia shambani mpaka nikaita hawa wakubwa wakaweza kunisaitia. Aki mpaka nikalia. Lakini wakubwa walipo kuja, waliweza kunisaitia hizo ndavu sikatoka shambani. Na nikashukuru maana watulisaitiana tukiwa pamoja na wao. Na shida ni mingi na... Ndavu nye nyingi sana usiku. Kuanzia saa kumna mbili, sinakuja mpaka shambani na sinakatalia shambani mpaka tunaita wakubwa. Wanakuja, wanatusaitia kutoa. Ikikaka kama masaa mawili inaluti tena. Watu tunawaita tena wanakuja kutoa mpaka tunakaa na wao mpaka asubuhi. Tukiamkia asubuhi ndio wanaweza kwenda mpaka saa mbili. Oh. Eh. Sawa pole. Asante sana. All right, so that's just uh, one example of the pain that residents and, and farmers really do feel when their hard work is being interfered with by animals such as elephants. The heat, it's, it's scorching right now and uh, ahead of me I can see farmers that are still working so hard. So really there is no wonder when a farmer is so upset when they hear or come into contact with elephants. That is just one of the examples of human wildlife conflict here in Kajiado County. Sawa Sante, Kwaheri. Jambo, habari, habari. All right, so now I am joined by Jackson Mailu, Tim from the Big Life Foundation and Sirere Mbabai. Yes, Sirere is a gentleman that takes care of these farms. Tim works with the Big Life Foundation and Jackson over here is a farmer in this region. So this farm that we're about to have a look at is actually an example of the human wildlife conflict because elephants often wade their way into these farms and we're going to have a look at some of the damage that's caused Tim you're yeah. going to lead the way yeah. all right so this Tim is an example of some of the destruction yeah. Yeah. all right so let's have a look at this yeah. All right, Tim, explain what this is. They say this, they don't eat stamp, they, only, they, eat, they eat the maize. This is the maize. After removing the corn, they throw away this. All right, yeah. so the elephants are, are quite uh, particular, clearly. Yeah. Um, they, they do away with the stem yeah. and just yeah. eat what they yeah. eat what they want. Yeah. Okay, and, and if we just have a look around here, there is quite a lot of... Uh, damage and destruction. Yeah. A lot of elephants and it was about nine of them. They stay here for about um, maybe two hours and then that, that's, that's why they make a big a big destruction like this. Yeah. So when when there's all this uh, devastation, mm. as a farmer how does it make you feel Jackson? Uh, I feel very angry. So this is the, uh, the food. Yeah. I feed my family. When it is damaged all of my life is still, and the family is finished. Okay. Yeah. okay. And um, how does Milo, over, um, I beg your pardon, Terere over here, mm -hmm. deal with this issue? Because he helps protect yeah. the farms. They do this. Yeah. We have our camp somewhere. We have our camp and my people there. After the, uh, this, this, they had any problem of an animal, animal. They call my people and they, they help together and push out the elephant back to, to the to the area. Okay, okay, we'll come to that in just a moment, but um, let's see evidence that yeah. really this destruction yeah. okay. is caused by elephants. Like dance. Right, mm -hmm. yeah. okay. take us mm -hmm. through. Yeah. These are the elephants who are doing this. So we be, be, better look for the dunks. Okay. And if we, if we see the dunks, maybe there's some 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 cones inside, like right now. Yeah, this is the dance of the elephant. All right, so this it's, it's is in the middle of the chamber. See, the. All right, so what we can see here is some. Small, small uh, 
Small maize. All right, I'm going to get my hands in this dung because it's, it's dry. Yeah. But you can have a look and see here that this is actually maize. Yeah. And, and there's some over here as well. Yeah. So what this is really proves that elephants have been in this farm and they have consumed the maize. Gosh, and this looks uh, relatively yeah. fresh. Yeah, and then we are still going to look for another to show that there's a, there was a lot of elephant. This is one elephant. Uh -huh. There's some, some, some of the, the dunks we are looking for. We go okay. to look for. All right, and um, Jackson, tell us more about um, the, how many times do elephants come and invade farms? Oh, every day, every day, yeah, every day. Okay. On that time we plant, we keep on watching until three months okay. when we are fast. Okay. Beans and maize, so we do not sleep at our homes. We sleep on, on the chamber watching Oh, 12 hours. Okay. Yeah. okay. And um, Serrera here helps to protect some of the farms. Yeah. So yeah. when he sees an elephant coming, yeah. what does he do? Does he contact Big Life? Yeah, mm -hmm. they contact yes. my people here because they are very close to them. Mm -hmm. We have some fireworks to chase them. Mm -hmm. And then really after maybe one minute we are there and we help them and chase them away. We scare them away with those fireworks. All right. Okay, yeah. let's keep going then. Yeah. So uh, now we're going to see some more dung some more. because sure. Tim, the elephants don't only eat the maize, they eat tomatoes as well. Yeah, tomatoes, beans, everything like cassava, every food. Wow. Yeah. All right, so what we have here is a huge pile of dung. Um, and clearly we can see there's again some, some maize in here, but also what else is in, in this dung, Jackson? Tomatoes. Okay. Yeah. Like this tomatoes yeah. So these yeah. are. Yeah, here in the nyan. Tomatoes. Those are tomatoes. Yeah. All right, there you go. So these are uh, some dried tomatoes in, in elephant dung. Um, I want to know more from. Hamze over here, um, does he believe that there can be a solution to any of this? Sasa ni mesuri kama utatengeneza, utengeneza usaidiana na mutu hawa. Utasaidi hapa moja, lakini ni yeye, ni ntukusetu, utaka hapa moja karibuni. We are helping them. And, and the good solution right now we are hearing that there's a wire coming up there mm -hmm. between the farmers and the the conservancies. So it, is, it will make us be very happy because of that wire, because we, we are going to, to, to stay without problem, and the elephants are staying the other side and are staying there. Okay, yeah. and uh, for Jackson, you can, you can answer in Swahili. Mm -hmm. When you see that the elephants have eaten your Swahili. tomatoes yeah. and eaten your maize, mm -hmm. what does this mean for you and, and your family? Uh, hii inaonesha inaniweka uchungu na kuonesha maisha yangu na watoto wangu na boma na marafiki imeisha na ile suluhisho tunaweza endelea kuomba kama si hawa watu wanahusiana na wanyama vile wanatusaidia na wanakaa karibu nasi atungefuna chochote atungekuwa tunakula kwa hivyo tunaomba kama inawezekana tuwekewe waya Ukute waya unakaa mbali na sisi tunakaa na wanyama vizuri. Kwa maana wanyama atutaenda kusumbua wanyama na wao waji kusumbua chakula yetu. Kwa hivyo tunavuna vizuri. Lakini kwa wakati huu hao wakuwa wanyama ndio wanatusaidia big life ndio wanatusaidia. Kwa hivyo tunaona waya ukiwekwa hata wao kazi kwao itakuwa rahisi. Kwa hivyo tunaomba vile kazi inaweza kuwa rahisi. Ukute Saa ingini ya wanyama ni atari. Sisi hata tukichunga. Tunaweza wakatuua. Na hiyo siyo maombi yetu. Maombi yetu ni tupate chakula. Wanyama wakae vizuri. And if you can ask both of them, yeah. how do they view wildlife? Do they, do they like wildlife or do they feel that wildlife is a big, big problem to their lives? Sisi wanyama tunawapenda. Kwa sababu, tunajua wanasaidia inchi yetu ni faida. Watalii wanakuja wanawaona hata sisi tunaenda National Park tunawaona kwa hivyo ni vizuri wawekewa waya wakae huko wasije 
mahali pako chakula kwa sababu kama vile tumevunzwa ni watu wa Biki 5 wana Biki Life wanatufunza tusiwe wanyama kwa hivyo tunaona wanafai wana faida kwa sababu hata watoto wetu wanaajiriwa huko wanapata kazi na kama hakuna wanyama wezi pata ka, kazi kuajiriwa huko napenda unapenda cha shauri shauri wa watoto watakuja kusomea lakini utasaidiana na sisi lakini pingine uweka waya utasaidia sisi chakula yetu aiumi shauri chakula watoto na chakula kujirani tu nataka hivyo Well really this farm that we've gone through is just one example of some of the conflicts between humans and animals. We've seen that elephants have come through this farm, caused some destruction, caused pain to certain families here that sweat to uh, bring this maize up and then the elephants are in fact uh, consuming their food and there is proof that we've seen that really elephants have been through these farms. So there are many many issues that need to be addressed. But Big Life is addressing some of these issues and later on in the show we'll tell you how. Before we take a break it's your chance to win a prize on our wild guess question. We ask how is KWS working with communities to help them live in harmony with wildlife? How is KWS working with communities to help them live in harmony with wildlife? Use the hashtag #ntvwild on Twitter or like our NTV Wild Facebook page and post your answer there. The first person to answer correctly wins two nights for two at the luxurious Old Tokai Lodge in the heart of the Amboseli National Park. Get more information about the lodge at www.oldtokailodge.com. You'll also win one bottle of wine courtesy of Wines of the World and a gift hamper courtesy of Wildlife Direct. Welcome back to NTV Wild Talk with me Smriti Vidyarthi coming to you from Kajiado County the Amboseli ecosystem and now it is drizzling a little bit but never mind let's bring you a reminder of our NTV Wild Guess question On Wild Guess we ask how is KWS working with communities to help them live in harmony with wildlife Use the hashtag NTV Wild on Twitter or like our NTV Wild Facebook page and post your answer there. The first person to answer correctly wins two nights for two at the luxurious Old Tokai Lodge in the heart of the Amboseli National Park. Get more information about the lodge at www.oldtokailodge.com. You'll also win one bottle of wine courtesy of Wines of the World. and a gift hamper courtesy of Wildlife Direct. So now I am at the base camp of the Big Life Foundation. This foundation has some of the most effective ways of mitigating human wildlife conflict. I'm about to speak to Tim who works for the foundation. Tim, thank you for joining us again. What exactly does the Big Foundation do? The Big Life Foundation is demonstrating how they can uh, push out the elephant out of crops and we have about 30 meter kilometers from the road to the to Misigio we have three three mobiles mobile 1 2 3 which are helping community to fetch good food and to protect them their food with with elephant we have a lot of elephant coming out from Amboseli but because of hard working we really we demonstrate we 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 do work with fireworks because we don't know how how many animals how many rangers or personnel does the big life foundation have working in this area we have 346 rangers but we do work with conflicts like lions like like lion entering the bomas like elephants 
and like maybe people maybe people may be harmed by animals like the other the, the one we saw the other day so we we try to be one 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 family to protect them and show them we are able to do to do this. And from where we're standing, um, on that side of us is where the Amboseli National Park yeah. is, and on the other side is where the farms are. Yeah. So your base camp is in between, so that you can get to the elephants before they reach the farms. Um, explain to us how you keep the animals away. You know, I have I have some rangers here. I have some rangers somewhere. We call me Imisigio. My people, every f at four o'clock. They start now observing. Either we can, they can see them to scare them before, before the crops. And that's why we can win them. Otherwise, if they come to the crops, if we remove them from here, they go another area, they go another. But if you cut off before chambers, they go, they go, they go back. Okay, Tim, let's now see a demonstration of how you keep these elephants away. If there's an emergency, how yeah. do you go about it? Firstly, I see you have a motorbike yeah. uh, behind you. Explain what that's for. The uh, motorbike in mobiles, we have three mo mobiles, four mobiles. Each one with a motorbike and the vehicle. Both of them are working. In maybe emergency, we took the mobile and two rangers with fireworks or with any, anything like fireworks or mm -hmm. that gun. Mm -hmm. And then we, che we sent them where there is problem and then the, the, the car will go back later. And the motorbike goes out. Okay, you are holding a torch, what's this for? This is the first thing to, to do when we are light, looking, look, looking for the elephant. Maybe it's dark and then we, we heard this elephant somewhere, maybe in the crops, maybe in the maze. We go there when we are lighting. These things are very powerful. Mm -hmm. And then we start looking for the, where the wind is going because of the, uh, the paper gun. The paper gun, you know, we, when the wind is going this way, we shoot at the opposite side so the, the elephant can get that. The pepper smell. smell. Okay, let me just um, explain what this is. So there's a gentleman here at the moment, and this is the pepper gun, yeah, the pepper uh, gun. that you're talking about. Just yeah. come this way a little yeah. bit. Onesha uh, Hitafadali. All right. Now this isn't actually a um, a harm. real harmful no. gun. This is a pepper gun. Okay. And if we just open this, we have we have some pepper balls. Those are pepper balls. Oh, Call right. them pepper balls. Pepper balls. Yeah. So what happens is that you shoot these towards the elephant. There is some smoke coming out, and that, those smokes there is pepper inside. Okay. And that then shoots yeah, them yeah, away. Yeah, yeah. There's another gentleman standing right next to us, and he has something like what we a, call a thunder flash. A thunder flash. This thing's very dangerous to show, to, to throw. If you don't throw quickly, it will break your hands or whatever it is that way. But we, because we, we, we learn our people how to do it. So essentially, these are all ways yeah. of keeping the yeah. elephants away, yeah. but they do yeah. not harm the elephants. Yeah. They don't harm no, them. No, 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 exactly no harming. Now, the Amboseli Ecosystem Management Plan has been proposed as one way of addressing and mitigating all the problems that face the Amboseli ecosystem. That plan is currently being discussed and launched behind me here in Nongotiak. <laughs> All right, Governor, thank you so much for joining us on NTV Wild Talk. Earlier in your address, you said that conservation is doing very badly. Can you expand on that? What I mean is that we have pockets where conservation in this country is doing well. But the trajectories, given the prevailing situation in this country, where we haven't seen a lot of goodwill from the top, we could actually say that the future is not very bright. We must do something to arrest the situation because no serious, no serious interventions have been taken to make sure that conservation is safe. And by conservation, I mean 
mainly the, co the, the coexistence between people and wildlife and whatever people are doing in a sustainable way. The issue of sustainability is critical and that we don't need to think about conservation in terms of just having wildlife and just having people. It's about sustainability, it's about livelihoods, the protection of livelihoods, it's about the ecosystem, how healthy are our ecosystems, what are we doing to make sure that they remain healthy for a long time. And you don't think that there is any political goodwill coming from the top? I'm sure it could be a lot better. When we have people being killed by wildlife and for two or three years there is no compensation, that is not building goodwill from the communities. And this is escalating, it's getting worse. So we must have resources to take care of those cases. We can't have children being killed by elephants and then we wait for several years before they are compensated. That does not show seriousness. How do you describe the um, conservation efforts and the human wildlife conflict here in your county, Kajiado? In Kajiado, we've had escalating cases of mainly elephants roaming all over. And in Amboseli, it is worse. We've had a number of cases of deaths. We've pe we've people who, we have people who are hospitalized. And that is not a good trend because the situation as it is right now is still a bit better. When it gets very dry, as it will surely be, we will have even more cases. So I dread to think about that. With the kind of arrangements we are having where we are not even paying the few cases of deaths, I think we are going to see a, a worse situation. And what is Kajiado County doing to address some of these problems? We have the management committee, I mean the compensation committee in place. We are ready to roll, but there is no money to operationalize that committee. I have spoken with the, the Professor Judy Wahungu, who is a CS, and we badly need resources to operationalize these committees. We can't have a committee sitting there and yet it doesn't have money. So we, we, we want to work closely with them. We are talking, we are discussing these issues. We have looked around to see how we can improve on tourism in this county. And we want both local and international tourism to work well. And we can promote that as a county. And we want to work with everybody, with the hotels here. But that is not enough because the issue of wildlife conservation is actually for all of us. And yet compensation matters and national park matters. And this is a national park, it's not a, a reserve. If we were talking about a reserve, then the county would come in more. But the national park belongs to the national government, and that is why all the resources here. Most, all the money is actually going to Exchequer. And all, whatever is coming here is very minimal. It cannot sustain a healthy working relationship between communities and the park. On a positive note though, the Amboseli Ecosystem Plan has just been launched. Congratulations on that. Why has it taken so long though? It has taken so long because many people, many bureaucrats in Nairobi do not understand the urgency of most of these things. That is why some of them will recommend that we have a city next to the third most important national park in this country. And to me that is ignorance, sheer ignorance and lack of commitment. But we are happy that this management plan has been launched today. We hope it's going to be a turning point so that we can do things in a more serious way. For us as a county government, we are excited because we can now help in implementing something that is legal and something that is nationally recognized. But that is not enough. We still need a lot of support from the national government, from the park services, and a number of other concerted efforts by NGOs and all other agencies to make sure that this works. And ultimately, what do you hope that this uh, plan achieves? I hope, first and foremost, it's going to bring in some sanity. And as we sensitize the people around, they need to know what the, their role is and what the role of the park is and what all of us can come together and do. They need to see the bigger picture. We need to run away from this issue of silo thinking so that people don't just think about the small bit they are doing. We need a universal view. That is what this management plan brings. It helps everybody to see their bit, but also helps us to see the bigger view. That is why we are excited. And we hope that as we join hands, 
we now have a framework within which to work and make things work better. All right, thank you so much for your time and all the best. She's aware that um, the plan has integrated the community roles in the, in the community, but it's not, it's not detailed according to her. She doesn't know exactly what, what, is, what the plan entails, but she has heard people say that it's a plan that helps in the achievement of the sustainable development as well as community participation in conservation. He is hearing about the plan today and he is not aware what it entails. He was among the people who uh, consulted about the, all the issues that the, plan, the, the management plan is, is integrating. And basically, to him, it's about community and conservation. Uh, this is the first time he's, he's, getting about the, he's getting the message. To him, it's uh, something that has been implemented from the top management coming down and you know it's like a, according to him they are being forced to to implement he's from the neighborhood and there has been a lot of talks and a lot of plans and a lot of promises from the government about change as far as human wildlife conflict is concerned so to him he, until until he sees something happening, it's just another talk again. So those are just some of the views of a handful of residents that live in the area. And of course, no doubt, this plan intends to support the entire community. Well, now I'm joined by Benson and we are currently at the Altukai Lodge. Now, Benson is in fact part of the Amboseli Ecosystem Trust. And uh, that trust, Benson, is of course mandated to ensure that this plan is implemented. That is a huge task. Is the trust ready to do so? Yes, the trust is ready to do so. And uh, for, because of so many factors. Uh, one, the trust is built up of uh, different actors. We have, uh, as you saw in our launch, uh, we, had, um, we have so many people behind us. We have the government, we have the community, and the different players within the ecosystem. So I think it's a task that we are able to deliver, although it's a tall order. It is a tall order indeed. Benson, what does this Amboseli ecosystem plan intend to achieve? What is the point of it? Uh, basically, the plan in intends to achieve um, a sustainable development within the ecosystem. We're just realizing that uh, everybody wants to do everything in everywhere, and we're trying to put up a balance of who to do what where. We're just saying, excuse us, people from Nairobi, you need this ecosystem. Mm -hmm. We are saying, why do you have to spend so much going to South Africa, going to Zimbabwe to see this wildlife? We are saying, let's leave these pockets open for wildlife for, our, for us and for our future generation. So generally, we want to achieve a, um, a sustainable development where everything is in its own place. If it is arable agriculture, it is in own place. If it is livestock production, it is own place. If it is tourism we realize in a sustainable way. So how then does the plan intend to achieve this? Uh, the plan is well, uh, well designed with the principles and guidelines to make sure it is implemented. And the plan is divided in several sections where we said the first section is zoning the land. We zone this land in terms of where do we keep our livestock? Where do we want to see farming? Where do we want to see tourism? And by so doing, by so following these zones, we'll be able to realize sustainable development. Because we'll be able to put a backstop on what kind of development will come to Amboseli and how, as defined by the locals and other stakeholders. How bad is human-wildlife conflict? Because that, of course, is a key issue here in Amboseli. Uh, it is for sure a key issue, and we must uh, be cognizant that the as currently we have very low uh, poaching in Amboseli, but very high human wildlife conflict. And we are losing a higher number of wildlife to human wildlife conflict than poaching anywhere in this country. Uh, within the management plan, there is a clear definition of how to deal with human wildlife conflict. However, because of lack of funding, we are unable because one, we wanted to revive all the fences that were within the arable, farm, uh, arable farms. And at the upper belt 
of Kilimanjaro, we also wanted to put f uh, fences to, to try and mitigate this. We also wanted to establish committees that will be able to speak to these people. And it can only be people who resonate with the community. You don't bring foreign ideas of how to right. mitigate. Right. Uh, yeah. And is fencing a solution? It is partly a solution but it, it cannot be the ultimate solution. Mm. The solution is for all of us to sit down and, and uh, discuss <coughs> on uh, what else can we do. Is it fences? Is it, uh, is it um, trying to educate these people more? Is it trying to reduce the number of olives? I don't know because I'm not right, an expert right. in that, but those are things that we may need to think about. Right. Well, of course, <coughs> human wildlife conflict is largely as a result of growing populations and development as well. How do you intend to deal with the issue of development? You are right. And actually, a case in point is where currently in Amboseli we have the long, like, uh, places that have been known to be wildlife dispersal areas, wildlife corridors. We have people coming up with um, horticulture farm. We have people coming up with different other development that are not, they don't go hand in hand with conservation. Mm -hmm. And this is what is increasing wildlife, uh, human wildlife conflict. So what we're saying is, can we have people stay where they traditionally used to stay? In as much as the population is growing, people are also in encroaching to areas that are known for wildlife and mm -hmm. livestock production, probably. Uh, Benson, it is now 2016, and this plan started 2008, and it goes up to the year 2018. That only gives us two more years. Are you really going to achieve everything that that plan sets out to in the next two years? Yes, we have already achieved a lot, and you'll realize by the partners we play, including Wildlife Direct, that is part of this team. Um, the current program that they're doing about women empowerment and uh, other programs they're doing in Amboseli are part of implementing the project. In as much as we'll realize that this plan 2018 was not the end, it was not the destination. Right. It was just a time frame to think, to let us think around and to be able to adapt to changing and uh, changing things and dynamics so that we can revise it and probably see take for another 10 years. So it's not like the end or the destiny, it's only that a, a time frame that will allow us to rethink and probably review and factor in new changes that affect the entire ecosystem. All right, Benson, yeah. thanks very much indeed. All right, so speaking to me, Benson from the Amboseli uh, Ecosystem Trust that needs to implement that Amboseli Ecosystem Management Plan. Uh, plenty of work already done, but of course, plenty of work yet to do. This is NTV Wild Talk. Coming up on Saturday night on the NTV Wild documentary series is this. Alan Root and his wife, Joan, I reckon to be the best wildlife filmmakers in the business. Just watch them. For many years, they were simply photographers, sending off their shots for other people to make into films. Then in 1967, they made a film for survival about the Galapagos Islands, which had a royal premiere, won awards, and enabled the roots to become independent. If the Amboseli Ecosystem Management Plan is implemented properly, it should be able to address all the challenges that face both the people and the wildlife, enabling them all to thrive. It's certainly something to watch. That's it on NTV Wild Talk with me, Smriti Vidyarthi. Thanks for watching. See you next Tuesday, 10 p.m.